Whether or not you're a fan of the Cavaliers, at least you're looking at teams starting to chase them down a little bit here in the well, East. Well, how about the fact that Washington is closer to Boston than Boston is to Cleveland? It's very perceptive. Thank you. I was reading the numbers and doing the math <laughs> and talking at the same time, Casey. That's very perceptive of you. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you look at, at the East, and let's talk about this in, in all seriousness, because you guys have been on teams that deal with injuries. Everybody's got to deal with them. Kevin Love is out. Everybody says, okay, are we vulnerable now in the East or not? Well, they, they definitely are vulnerable. Um, not only is Kevin Love out, but J.R. Smith is, is, is out also. So, you know, the, the toll that that will take on LeBron's body during the regular season, because they're still going to get everybody's best shot. So you're looking at the minutes that LeBron is playing, and you're looking at how, how unfresh he'll probably be if they get to the Eastern Conference Finals and in the Finals. Um, then you say, okay, can Kevin Love and J.R. Smith, when they come back, what type of chemistry will they be able to develop quickly? So all of those things are going to be problematic. But if Kyrie Irving keeps balling the way he's balling, none of it will matter. Yeah, I, I've been uh, calling our next guest the Mariana Rivera of uh, the NBA because uh, the league's best closer is sitting with us here on set as we talk with Kyrie Irving and the Cavs. We were just talking about, look, every champion deals with adversity. You guys are dealing with some injuries. What's been kind of mentally the approach to into the break, not having Kevin, not having JR? Uh, well, in, uh, anytime you lose a big piece, uh, such as Kevin, the, the production that he offers to us every single night, uh, its ability to space out the floor and really create some mismatches for us, when, when that – when a person like that goes down, um, you know, there, there's also the norm that you can hold your head. Uh, you know, we, we all send texts out to him, make sure he's okay. And then the next moment shifts and it's like, okay, now we got to, now we got to raise our level. And I think me and Bron have done a, a great job of just understanding that, realizing that our defensive pressure, our defensive execution has to be at an unbelievable level. And then offensively, we got to take care of uh, getting other guys shots and making sure that our offense is flowing, flowing the right way. Well, Kyrie, you've, you've had an amazing start to your career, and I say that with great anticipation about still what's to come because we've seen so many huge moments from you. It seems like when the lights get brightest, you, you shine you know, better than a lot of guys who have those opportunities, and it's been amazing to see you do it. I, I want to know from your perspective, where, when did you realize you had that? And, at, w at what stage? Were you in grade school? Was it high school? We know your Duke career was, was abbreviated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm wondering, like, it, just inside you, when it is that you had that feeling and when that clicks on? Uh, I would say that I, I, I've, I've had it in me. I think that uh, being able to be prepared for those moments has been just instrumental since I've been a kid. I've always been the, the kid in the backyard, uh, practicing on moves, you know, kind of imagine myself going against yeah. Isaiah, going against Kobe, going against greats in our league, great point guards, and, and being able to have combination of moves and practice different shots, being able to work on my post game, my ISO game, coming off pick and rolls, and then now the translation is happening now that I get older and, and I'm getting more mature in terms of understanding of the game, how to control it. Uh, how to be there for my teammates, how to be a better leader. It's a lot that goes into this game to being a complete player. And I think that now that my understanding is getting a lot better of that, I'm becoming a better player. So, um, you know, really just reaching out and having great, great mentors and guys that are willing to give you the knowledge of, of being a great player. You know, what, I, what I've been most impressed with about you is just your perseverance. Um, you know, in college, you had the foot injury. And, you know, your first couple of years in Cleveland, uh, those weren't great years yeah. for, for you or the organization. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, everything comes together. And when it comes together, you get to the finals, and then you, 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 you have the knee injury. Yeah. And, and then you have to persevere and keep coming back, right? So if you look over the last five, six, seven years of your basketball career, right, this, is, this has been the most healthy you've been yeah. and probably the most fun you've had. Yeah. But what has given you that ability to just really just stick to it and grind it out and keep pushing? Uh, my strength and conditioning coach, Robin Pound, has been great. Uh, you know, him coming into – to taking over my just my my medical process and making sure that I'm okay and fitted to go out there, uh, you know, frac fracture my kneecap was probably the the biggest yeah. change for me, and I had to realize that um, the game was a lot bigger than I even anticipated. Uh, the love that I have for it and the passion I have to to really go out 
and work on my craft. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when that was taken away from me and, and the fact that it always has to come to a point where something gets always taken away from us to, to, for us to really appreciate it, um, you know, sometimes you need that. And, and I think that was a reality check to where, okay, you, you, you've come off knee surgery. Now how do you return? How do you get back to where you were? And now how do you progress from that point? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it took a while, but I, I love this game. But, but you never said, why me? I, you, you know what I mean? That, no. To me, that's the most impressive thing about this, this individual journey for yourself. Because a lot of players, you know, they get in these situations and it's like, oh, man, why me? Bad luck. I mean, and you get all the way to the finals and then the kneecap happens. Yeah. What kept you so optimistic about yourself? That's, wh that's what I'm asking. Uh, I, I really didn't have time to uh, kind of wallow in my misery and sit back and, and give the energy to really being sad and, and angry of why this happened and start mm -hmm. asking all these questions. My, my next focus and my next vision was getting back on the court. My yeah. next fo focus was getting back to who I really am and being able to show the world that um, there's this, there's this deep-rooted feeling that I have that can't be shaken. And once you accept that, that deep-rooted feeling can get yeah. you almost out of anything. It, you, th there's nothing that, that's too big or too low for you. There, yeah. there's, there's a game six in Toronto, a closeout game. There's, there's nothing too big. There's no environment. There's no conversation. There's, yeah. there's no contact that is too much for you to handle. I mean, you, you think back to the times when you're alone and you're thinking about your emotions and you're trying to figure it out. That can be scary for, for some people. But for me, I, I really just accepted it and, and wanted to move forward. Yeah, tell that story more often, particularly to a lot of younger kids because... Oh, absolutely. That, I would love to tell that. That's more inspirational to them than, than you winning the championship. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just the optics, obstacles that you've had to continue to overcome and the setbacks mm -hmm. and then to move forward. Well, the journey is always so much more beautiful. Yeah. I, I thought that the championship was going to culminate everything, but it... It was a great accomplishment, but the journey of actually getting back to there and then the continuance after that, uh, that that's where I get the most beauty, yeah. is, is going through everything and waking up at 5 in the morning and, and doing things that no one else is necessarily doing, get there for my teammates, getting shots up, making sure I'm taking care of my body when no one's watching. So, I mean, that, that, that's the best enjoyment for me. Yeah. Work's paid off. Congratulations on a great first half, and always appreciate it, Kyrie. Yes, sir. Thank you. And don't Kyrie lay that jacket down. down. I might steal it. <laughs> 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 it looked good on you, not with the purple. Oh,